only pluralism of information can prevent war. The perception of events varies between individuals. Here the same mark reads six from one end and nine from the other. This is by Thierry Meshan. All over the world we observe an abundance of media, but not polyphony. They all refer to the same sources that convey the same picture of events. However, we know that while facts exist in a unique way, the way we perceive them is multiple. As early as the 1980s, UNESCO has had uh, pointed to informational imperialism, quote unquote, this way of imposing one perception and denying all other perceptions. Today, this dominance manifests itself in the new checkers. The only way to break free from the system is not to create new media, but new news agencies. After World War II, modern international law was established with the idea of dealing with war propaganda. UN General Assembly Resolution 110 of November 3, 1947 and Resolution 381 of 17 November 1950. Quickly, international legislators, hence sovereign states, agreed that we can fight against wars only by ensuring that free flow of ideas and information. Resolution 819 of December 11, 1954. However, in recent years, we have witnessed an extraordinary backsliding that is depriving us of the thinking of others, exposing us to war propaganda, and ultimately hastening us towards a global conflict. This phenomenon began with the private censorship of social networks of the sitting president of the United States, then continued with the public censorship of uh, various media, for example, Russia media in the West, and from now on, the thinking of others is no longer perceived as a tool to prevent wars, but as a poison that threatens us. Some Western states established agencies responsible for correcting information they consider false or fake news. NATO is considering the creation of a unit under the name Ramstein Information, responsible no longer for censoring Russian intelligence sources, but Russian ideas among the 30 member states of the Atlantic Alliance. This is a complete reversal of the values of the Atlantic Alliance, which was for, founded as a, an extension of the Atlantic Charter, which incorporated President Franklin Roosevelt's four freedoms. The first of three freedoms is that of expression, free freedom of speech. However, before the invention of the Internet, while the United States and Soviet Union had guaranteed the free flow of ideas with the Helsinki Accords, the United Nations, and in particular its agency in this field, UNESCO, were concerned about um, the information imperialism. A technical superiority of the West allowed them to impose a vision of events on developing countries. In 1976, the Nairobi Conference, the UN raised the question of the function of the media in terms of strengthening peace and international understanding, promoting human rights and combating racism, apartheid and incite, incitement to war. Irish foreign, uh, former foreign minister and Nobel Prize laureate Sean McBride had established a committee of 16 figures within UNESCO. It included the French Hubert Beauve-Marie, founder of Le Monde, the Colombian Gabriel Garcia Marquis, Marquez Nobel Prize for Literature, and the Canadian Marshall McLuhan, communications theorist, Ellie Abel, the Dean of the School of Journalism at Columbia University, um, representing the United States, and the Director of the TASS Agency, Sergei Losev, representing Russia. Only the fifth and final part of the report, Tomorrow's Communication, became the subject of general discussion. The McBride Commission discussed the other party's draft but could not challenge their final wording. In any case, his report issued in 1978 seemed to enjoy consensus. In fact, by pointing out that the same events can be perceived differently and by opening up and uh, the question of the media of the North and the South, he was opening Pandora's box. At the same time, UNESCO was confronted with the propaganda of the South African apartheid regime and the negative propaganda of Muslim and Christian cultures about Israel. Ultimately, the United States and the United Kingdom closed the debate by withdrawing from UNESCO. We know today that the British Empire had secured its 
intellectual sovereignty by creating press agencies. Whitehall closed the Information Research Department, IRD, just before the McBride report, but the war against Syria showed that the mechanism was completely rebuilt in another form. Westerners continued to falsify the information at the source to the ears. In 40 years, the media landscape has been transformed. Emergency of international steaming, streaming television, websites and social, social networks. At the same time, there was a huge concentration of the media in the hands of a handful of owners. However, none of the problems listed in 1978 have changed. In contrast with the unipolar world, they have worsened. The journalistic profession today is recommended either to draft the telegrams of the press agencies or just adjust or to adjust the context for the media. News outlets provide new factual information without giving the source, while media outlets offer commentary and analysis with news outlets references. Analysis and interpretation require a lot of historic, economic and uh, etc. knowledge of which today's journalists are largely lacking. The immediacy of radios and television gives them no time to read books and even less to consult archives except in case of in-depth research. Comments and analyses were therefore very poor. The dominant ideology in the West, which tends to become global, has become a religion without God. There are only two camps, that of the good and that of the apostates. Truth is determined by the consensus among elites, while the people reject it. Any criticism is considered blasphemous. There is no longer any room for debate and therefore no democracy. The alternative press has become equally impoverished because it relies on the same data as the international media, news agency ca uh, cables. It's indeed enough to control AFP, AP and Reuters to impose a vision of events on us. You can season them according to this or that trend, Republican or Democrat, conservative or progressive, etc., but it will always be the same dish. After the 9-11 attacks, those who challenge the official version of events are described as conspiracy theorists, quote-unquote. After the election of Donald Trump, those who question the facts of news agency are accused, accused of distorting reality and manufacturing fake news. Journalists have forbidden themselves to broadcast the thinking of conspiracy theorists, hence dissidents, and are trying to correct fake news with check news. Yet at the same time, faith in mainstream media outlets has collapsed. In the United States, the Gallup Institute has been assessing trust in print media since 1973, and in audiovisual media since 1993. Trust in newspapers has fallen from 51% to 16%, and trust in radio and television from 46% to 11%. The only solution is to multiply the news agencies, hence the sources of information, not to do a lot, but a variety. Only then will we realize that the way an event is reported determines the way we think about it. For example, today, the three news agencies listed above are presenting the conflict in Ukraine as a Russian invasion. They claim that Moscow could not take Kiev and overthrow President Zelensky, but comments war crimes every day. It commits war crimes every day. It's a way of looking at them. We do not have the means to publish telegrams all the time. However, we publish a similarly similar weekly newsletter. Our criteria are different. We're referring to international law and not Western rules. Therefore, we describe the same conflict as an application of Security Council Resolution 2202 and the, quote, responsibility to protect, end quote, oppressed populations from 2014. The, fact, the facts are the same, but for the, sum, for the sum, the way they are described leads to thinking that the Russians are offenders, while ours leads us to believe that the Russians' position is legitimate the truth is that there is another difference. We interpret events in terms of time. For us and for the Security Council, there has been a civil war in Ukraine for eight years that has left 20,000 dead. Three major agencies pretend to ignore this. For us, radical nationalists, quote unquote, have a long criminal history. 
costing the lives of 4 million of their fellow citizens. The big three agencies also pretend to ignore this. This difference can be applied to all subjects. For example, the major news agencies explain to us that the West imposed sanctions to punish Russia for invading Ukraine. We don't read events that way. Once again, referring to international law and not Western rules, we note that the decisions of the Anglo-Saxon and European Union violate the Charter of the United Nations. And it's not about sanctions, since there was no court decision, but about financial weapons for waging war, etc. Those of Russia as formerly besieged the castles to starve those who had taken refuge there. Each difference and interpretation of the facts gives rise to another. For example, as we point out that Western pseudo-sanctions have not been approved by the Security Council, we are told that this is perfectly normal, given that Russia has veto power in the Council. In other words, to forget why the UN was organized the way it was. It's supposed, uh, it's supposed uh, not to speak good, but to prevent wars. This is precisely what allowed the Council to adopt the Resolution 2202, the resolution 2202 on the resolution of the civil war in Ukraine. However, the Westerners, despite the commitment of Germany and France, have not implemented it, forcing Russia to intervene. We could go on ad infinitum with this double reading. The important thing is to remember that the presentation of events fundamentally changed the way they are perceived. Finally, I'd like to call for the establishment of news agencies that describe events in their own way and no longer in the way of our leaders. In this way, and not by gossiping falsified information, we will regain our clarity. This is by Thierry Meishan, translated by Christian Akiara, and uh, I've translated this for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Thank you. Kindly support my Patreon accounts. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.